So this is Mr. Wise. Today we're going to be talking about signs of a reaction. This continues on in the notes that you're using from April 6th. And you should be able to fill in these particular notes on that same form. There are four signs of a reaction. Unexpected temperature change. Unexpected color change. A gas is given off in the form of odor, steam, or bubbles, and a precipitate is formed, which means when a solid comes out of solution. Now, when we say unexpected temperature change, if I am mixing up a cake and I were to put that cake in the oven and it sits in that oven for 30 minutes and I pull it out and it's warmer, that's not unexpected. doesn't mean it's not a chemical reaction, but it's not an unexpected ch change that the cake got warmer. Okay, but if I take two substances that are the same temperature, see they're both at room temperature, and I combine them together, and as a result of that chemical reaction, the temperature either increases or decreases, then that would be an unexpected temperature change. And of course, the unexpected temperature change, if you match that up to the pictures that I have there, it would be the sun. The sun is a reaction that's going off and it's giving off, giving off heat. Unexpected color change. Again, if I take some red paint and some white paint and I mix them together and it produces pink paint, that's not unexpected. But if I take two colorless liquids and combine them together and it produces something blue or something purple or something white, that would be an unexpected color change. Gas is given off. Now, a lot of times the reactions that we do in class and we do in chemistry labs, we do them with liquids inside of test tubes. And so if you see bubbles that are being produced inside of the liquid, this is not boiling. Again, if you were boiling water, if you put water on a stove top and you heated that up to boil, that's a state change. A state change is not a sign of a chemical reaction. That is a physical change. But if you look at this picture on the bottom left, there's a picture of a test tube, and you can see there's a liquid layer in the test tube, but down at the bottom, there's a reaction that's taking place and it's producing bubbles, and you can see a little bit lighter of a color that's going straight up, because the bubbles would go straight up until it reaches the side of the test tube, and it would go to the test tube and give off. So that one is a bubbles being given off. And then we produce a solid. One of the labs that we are doing next week we will produce this chemical reaction. It won't look as like this when I when you watch the video of me doing the reaction, simply because I don't wait long enough for the precipitate to settle at the bottom of the test tube quite as much as that. We do get this settling, but um, the solution that I'm using is not quite as strong, and so it's not as deep of a blue color on top. But this is a blue liquid on top, and this is a solid on the bottom. To be able to produce this substance, what I did was I combined two solutions. Now, if we take some sugar and we put sugar in water, the sugar is going to dissolve in the water. So the water then is a sugar solution. So when I say we take two solutions, I'm not using sugar. That was just an example of a solution. But what I did was I used barium chloride that I dissolved in water to make a solution. And I used copper sulfate, which I dissolved to make a solution. And when you combine those two solutions, which are in the liquid form, just like the dissolved sugar water is in the liquid form, when you combine those two solutions that are in the liquid form, they form a chemical reaction, and a result or a product of that chemical reaction is that solid precipitate. So sol a precipitate is formed when a solid comes out of a reaction. And the one thing I didn't talk about was the leaves. Obviously, when the leaves change color, that is a sign of a chemical reaction. Just because we know it's going to happen doesn't mean it's not unexpected. The unexpected thing that I talked to you about was like, for example, if you put something in an oven and it warms up, that's not unexpected. But if you mix two things that are the same temperature and it increases or changes temperature, that's unexpected. Or if you mix two things of different colors and they come together at a predictable color pattern that you might use in art, that's not unexpected. But if you mix two things like a purple and a colorless solution and it turns golden yellow, well, that would be an example of something that's unexpected. 
Some chemical reactions are combustion. Combustion is a reaction in which things are burning. And when they burn, they combine with the oxygen that's in the air. Rusting is another type of uh, reaction. It's like corrosion. So iron will rust. It's a property of matter that some metals like iron will rust. And rust is a reaction that happens when the iron bonds with the oxygen that's in the air in order to produce the new substance, which is called uh, iron oxide, which is it's reddish in color. It's not as strong. It's not it, it, it's very weak. It's a new substance like we get when a, we have a chemical reaction. Uh, another type of reaction is if you look at the Statue of Liberty, the Statue of Liberty is made out of copper, but it's got that green sheen to it. A penny is made out of copper, but if you look at a penny, it, it doesn't have that green sheen to it. And that's because of the corrosion process that went on. Uh, Statue of Liberty is on an island right in the middle of the Hudson uh, River, and, and, and the, the acid rains that are uh, there in the Hudson River have combined with that copper to form that nice, brilliant green sheen. Um, a nice thing about the copper on the Statue of Liberty, as opposed to rusting like as on this rusty tank, is that the rust on the tank, it will continue to rust through the solid. Whereas with copper, a nice, nice thing is, is that when, once it forms a protective layer, it protects the copper that's underneath of it. When I was in elementary school, 1986 uh, was the 100 year anniversary of the Statue of Liberty and they had elementary students collect pennies. Pennies are made out of copper. Uh, we collected pennies in order to do upgrades to the Statue of Liberty to uh, protect it for the next 100 years. Digestion, I don't have a picture of that. You know what it looks like going in, you know what it looks like coming out. So I didn't really feel the need to add a picture to that. Photosynthesis um, is a basic common reaction that as a science student, not just what we're learning about in seventh grade, but as a science student, um, you need to understand and be aware of the photosynthesis reaction. Plants use carbon dioxide and water plus energy, which comes from sunlight, and they produce two things. So the three reactants are carbon dioxide, CO2, water, H2O, and energy in the form of sunlight. And then the two products are oxygen, which is produced as a waste material to the plant, and sugar. The plant uses photosynthesis to produce sugar. Sugar holds that energy from the sunlight, and then the plant uses some of those sugars for other reactions to be able to produce its other plant parts that it has. Again, we get to this paragraph, and there are five red words in the word bank for you to fill out. You guys are watching this on my YouTube channel. Be sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Uh, Got to drive those numbers up and uh, have a good day.